346 lives lost, 387 jets grounded, over $20 billion erased overnight, all because of one hidden system Boeing thought would make flying safer. But how did a small piece of software turn the 737 MAX into aviation's biggest scandal and ground the world's most trusted jet? Let's uncover the fatal flaw. In the mid-2010s, Boeing faced a crisis, not of failure, but of competition. Airbus had just launched the A320neo, a fuel-efficient update that airlines loved. It promised lower costs and minimal pilot retraining, a dream deal. Boeing couldn't afford to lose ground. They needed an answer fast. The solution? Upgrade their best seller, the 737. But there was a catch. To fit newer, larger engines onto an airframe designed in the 1960s, engineers had to mount them higher and further forward on the wings. It worked mostly. The new setup made the plane more fuel efficient, but also changed how it flew. During certain takeoff angles, the repositioned engine caused the nose to pitch upward more than expected. A higher pitch meant potential stalls, something every pilot fears. Boeing engineers needed a fix, but a redesign would be too costly and delay the project for years. So they built a workaround, a system minimized by controlled documentation and not disclosed in pilot manuals. The Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS, its purpose? Automatically push the nose down when sensors detected excessive pitch. That way, the new 737 MAX would feel and fly like older 737s. This meant airlines wouldn't need to retrain their pilots. Boeing could promise no new certification required, saving time, money, and keeping customers loyal. To most, it seemed like a smart engineering shortcut. Software solving physics but beneath that elegant simplicity, it was assumed to be sufficiently reliable. At the time, it looked like a quiet victory in the aviation arms race. Yet inside Boeing's design labs, the seeds of a disaster had already been planted, hidden behind code and confidence. On October 29, 2018, Lion Air Flight 610 took off from Jakarta just before dawn. It was a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8, only two months old. The destination? Pangkal, Penang, a short domestic hop across the Java Sea. But within 13 minutes, the aircraft would plunge into the water, killing all 189 people on board. From the start, something was wrong. Just seconds after takeoff, the left angle of attack sensor began feeding false data to the flight computer. It told the aircraft that its nose was pitched dangerously high, even though it wasn't. MCAS, Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, was an automatic safety feature meant to push the nose down if the plane climbed too steeply. It was designed to make the new 737 MAX feel like older models. MCAS, designed to prevent stalls, activated automatically. The system forced the nose down, the pilots pulled it back up. But MCAS wasn't done. Every few seconds, it reactivated again and again. The flight data shows the crew fighting a losing battle. At one point, the aircraft dived more than 5,000 feet per minute. In the cockpit, confusion turned to chaos. The pilots had no idea MCAS even existed. It wasn't mentioned in their manuals or training directly. They radioed air traffic control reporting flight control problems and requested to return to Jakarta. Within moments, the nose pitched down once more, this time unrecoverable. At 6.31 a.m., Lion Air 610 disappeared from radar. The last data point showed the aircraft plunging into the sea at over 450 knots. What investigators found later was deeply troubling. The same plane had shown similar sensor problems on its previous flight the night before. A jump seat pilot had recognized the trim issue and guided the crew through a manual override procedure, but the maintenance log simply noted replace sensor. The deeper software issue remained. Boeing's internal documents later revealed that engineers had downplayed MCAS's authority. It could move the stabilizer far more than the test data had suggested and it could reset itself each time the pilots countered it. The Lion Air crash wasn't just a tragic accident, it was the first public sign that something inside the 737 MAX was fundamentally broken, and no one, not even the pilots, had been told. Five months after Lion Air 610, the world watched in disbelief as it happened again. On March 10, 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 took off from Addis Ababa, 
another brand new 737 MAX, another short flight. And just like Lion Air, it would end in disaster within minutes. 157 lives lost. Similarities were haunting. Seconds after takeoff, faulty sensor data once again triggered MCAS. Believing the plane's nose was too high, the system forced it down hard. The pilots pulled back. MCAS pushed again. The fight repeated, almost identical to the Lion Air profile. Altitude fluctuated violently. Airspeed warnings blared. The cockpit became a war zone between automation and instinct. But this crew had an advantage. They knew about MCAS. Boeing had issued a bulletin after the first crash, telling pilots how to handle runaway trim. The Ethiopian crew tried. They cut power to the stabilizer trim, attempting to take manual control. But at high speeds, the forces on the trim wheel were too strong to move by hand. When they reactivated electric trim to help, MCAS re-engaged instantly. The nose plunged one final time. At 8.44 a.m., six minutes after takeoff, Flight 302 impacted the ground near Bishoftu. Two crashes, two nearly identical timelines, the same system, the same failure mode. This wasn't random, it was systemic. Investigators began connecting the dots. MCAS relied on a single angle of attack sensor with no redundancy. If that sensor failed, the system acted on false information with full authority to override the pilots. There were no alerts, no warning lights unless airlines paid extra for them. Inside Boeing, the rationale was clear. Keep the system invisible so pilots would feel like they were flying an older 737. That invisibility came at a price. No one outside Boeing truly understood how powerful MCAS was. When investigators overlaid both flight paths, Lion Air and Ethiopian, the lines almost mirrored each other. Sharp climbs, sudden dives, desperate corrections. The pattern was undeniable. This wasn't a coincidence. It was the same design flaw playing out twice. Proof that the issue wasn't with the pilots, but with the plane itself. Before we find out what was the issue and Boeing insisted on its decision, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel, Jet Logic. Here we frequently post some of the most fascinating stories from the world of aviation. Boeing's choices weren't engineering poetry, they were business calculations. In the mid-2010s, Airbus's A320neo was winning airlines with big fuel burn savings and strong order momentum, squeezing Boeing on narrow-body market share. Airlines wanted fuel efficiency fast. Boeing needed a quick, low-disruption answer. Time to market became the North Star. Rather than design a clean sheet replacement, Boeing shoved larger engines onto a 1960s airframe. That introduced a new aerodynamic behavior, which the company solved with software, not structure. Software meant lower development cost, faster certification, and crucially, no widespread pilot retraining. That last point was commercial gold. Airlines could keep crews flying without simulator downtime or expensive courses. Those commercial wins came with risk trade-offs. Hiding an automatic augmentation system from pilots reduced perceived complexity, but it also concentrated authority in a hidden control loop that relied on single sensor inputs. In business terms, Boeing prioritized cost avoidance and customer stickiness over redundancy and transparency, a decision that shifted operational risk toward airlines and crews. Regulators didn't operate in a vacuum either. The FAA's delegation model, long used to speed certification by relying on manufacturer-authorized representatives, left gaps in oversight as later confirmed by the Department of Transportation's Inspector General report and the House Committee investigation. A DOT Office of Inspector General Review later flagged weaknesses in FAA's use of Boeing's organization designation authorization and its oversight practices during MAX certification. In short, parts of certification relied heavily on Boeing's internal representatives under FAA delegation. The market fallout was immediate and measurable. Grounding, lawsuits, settlements, and cancellations wiped out orders and imposed huge costs, tens of billions in direct and indirect losses proving that short-term program economics can create enormous long-term liabilities. Airlines canceled or deferred deals. Reputational capital evaporated overnight. Bottom line, the MAX story is a cautionary case of incentive misalignment, where competitive pressure, compressed schedules, and a regulatory model built on delegated trust created systemic blind spots. The business logic is explainable. The cost of that calculus became painfully clear. When Ethiopian 302 went down, the world reacted fast. 
Within days, aviation authorities grounded every 737 MAX, all 387 aircraft parked across 59 airlines. It was the first global grounding of a modern jet in decades. Billions in orders froze overnight, and Boeing's credibility, once untouchable, took a direct hit. Investigations unfolded across continents. Lawsuits mounted from families, airlines, and shareholders. Boeing's CEO, Dennis Muhlenberg, faced U.S. congressional hearings filled with anger and disbelief. By December 2019, he was out. The company brought in David Calhoun to lead a cleanup and a reckoning. Meanwhile, engineers worked around the clock on what would become a reworked version of the MCAS. This new version reads data from both angle of attack sensors, not just one. Its ability to move the stabilizer was limited, preventing runaway trim. Additionally, across the globe, EASA and Transport Canada required additional changes and independent scrutiny before giving clearance for recertification. Most importantly, Boeing finally made MCAS transparent. Every pilot now trained to recognize and counter it. After 20 months on the ground, the MAX returned to service in late 2020. Slowly, confidence began to rebuild. Airlines resumed deliveries, regulators monitored closely, and pilots re-entered the cockpit with updated manuals, simulator sessions, and far greater awareness of how the system actually behaved. But the lesson went far beyond one aircraft. The MAX story became a mirror for modern engineering, a reminder that innovation without transparency is a risk multiplier. Automation can enhance safety, and only when humans remain fully in the loop. It also forced regulators to rethink their oversight models and companies to reassess how commercial pressure shapes safety decisions. Because in aviation, trust isn't built through marketing. It's earned through clarity and accountability. In the end, the 737 MAX crisis wasn't just about a faulty system. It was about culture, about remembering that every line of code, every design shortcut has real lives behind it. So, how did one hidden system ground Boeing's best-selling jet? Because in the race to move fast and stay cheap, Boeing chose speed and cost over redundancy and transparency. MCAS wasn't just a software flaw. It was the outcome of pressure, shortcuts, and misplaced trust in automation. But today, the 737 MAX flies again, redesigned, retested, and relentlessly monitored. Every update, every flight is now a product of lessons learned the hard way. In a strange way, the tragedy forced aviation to evolve. The 737 MAX has become one of the most scrutinized aircraft in history, and that scrutiny is what makes the sky safer for everyone. For more deep dives like this, where engineering meets accountability, subscribe to JetLogic.